So we went down into this neurologist room and he was yeah. there with me. And he put the, the brain scan up and I went, oh my God, look at all those pretty little lights. <laughs> and he looked at me and he went, I don't think that's a good sign. When you've got a cognitive deficit and you've got an hour to ask all your questions you get and go, oh yeah. my God, I can't remember, I can't remember. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that's, you know, the fantastic. Um, but we don't have access to them all the time. And again, they're not living with it either. I am a person that's always just gone, right, I can do this. And I think with MS, what I'm just doing is taking one step ahead of me. But oh, yeah, yeah that, that point then, it's changed properly. Multiple sclerosis is disability for the rest of your life. Carol, welcome to the MS Mindset. How are we doing? Thank you very much. I'm great, thank you. Um, really great to connect. We're in your lovely studio today. Um, bit of a change of scenery for me. Um, love the space, and it's been really exciting to hear um, more about what you're, what you've got coming up, and what you've, you know, what projects you've been been working on. So, um, if you want to perhaps just talk through um, your your diagnosis, because you you have multiple sclerosis, um, like myself, um, and and what. What has led that to spur you on to do something positive with it? What's what's this journey? How, how did the journey start? I guess <laughs> I'll put it into an easier easier question. Thank you and welcome. It's a new space. We've just recently done it, and I and I love it. Perhaps a bit smaller than you're used to, no, no. yours, but you're very welcome. <laughs> oh, thank you. So, um, yes, thank you. I was diagnosed in 2019 with relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. Yep. And you'll know it's a shock, isn't it? It really, really is, yeah. Yeah, and it was a shock for everyone. I think I, I think I was fortunate in some ways because I have quite a significant cognitive deficit with mine, and that took some time to establish and to settle down. So I think for me, uh, pro quite possibly, didn't recognise a lot of what was going on. Yeah. So I think that's been a buffer for me. It, I'm sure it was worse for my family and friends than it was for me. Um. But uh, it's three years on now. Um, what it's meant for me is that I lost my legal career because with a cognitive deficit, you can't be insured for that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it gives me recognition issues and uh, memory issues. Um, I need a walker to walk and I'm, <clears throat> you know, at some point will uh, go into a wheelchair. And, yeah, just ordinary everyday things as, you know, yeah. we have good days and challenging days yeah. and fun days and, <laughs> yes taking the good days um, the so you yeah. touched on family there and, and i think that is something that we do ultimately all have to recognize isn't it that ms doesn't just affect the person who gets the diagnosis it affects the whole family so what yeah. was your family's reaction to the diagnosis well my family so um we we live quite far apart so i'm from manchester and um i'm up in the northeast now uh, and i moved up here for work and um so yeah for my family they had to come all the way up from manchester and um, that was stressful as it is you know then they have to go home and leave me here and um, that i'm sure is incredibly hard and um, speak to my family and um, speak to my mum every day speak to my brother and sister and, we, and we're in touch so you know um the support is there but it's from a distance and for me i've just got used to that it's okay um but for them i'm sure it's i'm sure it's really hard because i'm the eldest i have a brother and a sister and i would be the one that drove down to manchester at the weekend yeah. see everybody get involved have a laugh and then you know i'd come back home the same day uh, and now that just can't happen no. so the times that we can spend time together is when they can come up and they've got work families their own yeah. situations and stuff and yeah so so family life has changed quite a bit the support's none the less than it was but we just all have to adjust to that yeah. so that's why i think for some things it's really is harder for them yeah i think um that is something that was at my phone off the time no, off. oh right no worries. um yeah, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of synergy between us because I'm from just outside Manchester, and I've ended up here in the northeast, and and we've we've now connected over something that neither of us ever imagined yeah. we we would do. Um, and I do think you you do feel that almost sense of guilt or responsibility that well, I've moved away, so I have to make the effort and and travel down to to um, yeah. to maintain those relationships as all relationships do. They need maintaining. So um, when that sort of uh, ease of of travel and and just ah, impulsivity, I can go and well, let's just go for another 
nice mad one in Manchester and you know have, have a good time you can't just you can't do that anymore so that mm. that does have an, an effect doesn't it and I, and I can imagine um you know yeah. your family as mine wish they could do more would like to do more but ultimately yeah. there is that that restriction and I think perhaps with with MS I think it's one of those conditions that we learn more about after we're diagnosed if it's not if it doesn't impact your life or your family you don't tend to know all that much about it so yeah. being away from you and not knowing the full extent of what you're going through i think must be must be really challenging so what, what do you tend to do then to try and over overcome that how do you try and maintain your relationships um so me and my mum have a phone conversation every day yeah. um and yeah so um my brother and sister, um, we we have chats. Also, you know, there's WhatsApp, there's everything now, oh, isn't yeah. there? I'm sure Can't some escape. of mine were hilarious <laughs> at times, um, you know, when I was a bit more confused. But um, I'm settled on treatment now, so I, I'm, I do much better with things. Yeah. Um, it's um, difficult sometimes, um, you know, when they're bantering away. Yeah. And I'm kind of trying to catch up yeah so that can be difficult me and my brother were both quick thinkers and would fire off each other really yeah. quickly you know and um yeah and and i can't quite keep up with him the same now um my sister and i we have a bit of a different relationship you know a bit more girly talk yeah. about the children and, and and all sorts of different things and the one thing i am grateful for is that they are both in really good strong relationships right yeah. So you know, no, so they're happy and content, even though you can't be there to support yeah. them as you would have if if things exactly. had been different. Yeah, you know, they've both got their partners and their children, and yeah. you know, other members of the family that, as families grow. So, um, so yeah, for that, I'm really grateful. It helps me yeah. worry a little bit less. Yeah. Because I know my brother's got somebody who understands him completely. Yeah. And and that's and that's important. It's a strange thing, but we carry guilt for something we didn't ask yeah. what's that about <laughs> yeah but you often happens. find yourself apologizing don't you i'm sorry about this sorry for this you know uh, oh, i wish this hadn't happened and it's not it's not your yeah. fault yeah and so like i say i used to go down and of course when i'm down there everybody's there so i yeah. bob around everyone yeah or i'd say to everyone i'm gonna be at mum's yeah and then everyone just piles in yeah. like i'm the queen <laughs> everyone just turns up yeah so i get to see everybody so the you know my, my sister's been up and um and my niece and and her boys it's been lovely, yeah. but you know some people are just more frail and they can't yeah. make those journeys so it's it's, it, it's harder. But yeah, yeah. Um, do, do you find that overwhelming at all then? If if when you do go down, everyone wants to you know make the most of the opportunity and see as much of you, and suddenly you have got a house mm -hmm. full and everyone's asking you a million questions and trying not to say the wrong thing, hoping to say the right thing. Like how does that kind of make you feel when I you can't go down? Do it. I've not been. I've not been down. No, I just can't do it. I wouldn't. I, I just wouldn't be able to manage that. And I don't want. Mm, it sounds bad. I don't want to inflict that on them. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't again, want it them comes to back to that guilt. That frightened or that yeah. confused. You don't, they're they're going to sure. worry more. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure if it's vanity or concern. <laughs> Maybe a healthy if balance I'm of honest, both. Yeah. <laughs> um, it could be. It could be a bit of each. But yeah, you know, you have that. You know, this. Uh, I really think we need to do a separate podcast on that <laughs> thing of that switch over of finding your new identity. Yeah. Because it's part of that. I think Definitely. I'm the eldest. I would be the one that often instigated things. Shall yeah. we do this? Shall we do that? Um, and yeah, so sometimes, yeah, it's just like it really has changed. And yeah, the dynamics changed. I'm a different person, although maybe I'm not. Who knows? You certainly will feel like a different person, even if perhaps people, yeah. particularly those who are you know, distant from you and don't see you as often, um, yeah. they'll think of you the same and, and think of the same memories and thoughts that yeah. they, they probably already would have. But it's, yeah, it's how you feel. You've, you've, you've touched on that, that guilt, but I think you've, you've also kind of brought the conversation to around that grief as well of, yeah. of the life that you do lose because your life is not going to be the same. And there are things that you are going to have to do differently and things you cannot do anymore. Yeah. So how have you found, you know, you, you already mentioned there about your, um, your legal career, something you'll have worked incredibly hard for, something that you would have been and should still be very proud of. Mm. But how's it been, let, you know, getting to sort of let go of those reins a little bit from that perspective? Well, my friends and probably my MS 
neurologist will tell you that I'm in denial. Right. <laughs> because I look forward and not back. Yeah. That's what I do. I yeah. just go, right, there's no point in looking back. Yeah. So I lost my legal career, my yeah. driving. Yeah. I had the most beautiful MX5, to, um, BMW X5. Yeah. Black, black leather interior, massive yeah. wheels. I loved that. Worked car. hard for it, deserved it. And, and I owned loved it. it. It wasn't leased either. Yeah. Oh, my, it was my pride and joy. He yeah. got me everywhere safely, whatever the weather. Yeah. Yeah. And I felt safe in it. And everybody says, oh, don't worry. Lots of people drive with MS. You still drive yeah. with your MS. That's yeah. amazing. I just can't. Yeah. My cognitive, I just, I just couldn't. So, yeah, so my car went, my legal career went. That took kind of my identity. Yeah. I didn't, I had to move from my home. Yeah. I'm here in this beautiful, lovely, disabled built apartment. Um, and I absolutely love where I am. Yeah. But it was still a massive wrench yeah. that i didn't really understand at the time yeah went into hospital came out to a different person and a different life and yeah. a different so um even though we've got lots of things that are similar yeah it can still be very different can't yeah, it that's that's the thing i think that people not necessarily fail to appreciate but almost can't appreciate because yeah. if they do know someone who who has ms if they have had some experience it's hard to for people perhaps to understand that ms can be so different and you can have mm -hmm. such different even if you've got the same symptoms the severity the triggers can be different and that's something that i think yeah it is difficult for people to understand where your lesions are on your brain makes a massive difference Absolutely. and down your spine that's yeah. the, the issue for me is that i have a i have a lesion in an area of my brain called the pons right. and that's it's right in the center right and there's a little gray bit i usually remember the name of it it's the gray bit that fits your two halves of brain together. Right. And it's like a bit there. And yeah. I've got a really huge one inside there. Right. Now that sends, that connects the two halves of the brain, your right and your left. Yeah. So that makes a big difference for me as well. Right. So, um, so yeah, but you asked me how I cope. What I do is I just look forward. Yeah. I don't I, think there's anything wrong with that. I think, yeah, people can say, oh, you're in denial because they're not, you're, not perceived to be dealing with it how they feel you should be dealing with it yeah. you should be in tears i would be yeah. in tears if i'd lost all this how can you not be so yeah. upset and, and obviously you are you would if the choice was given to you you would prefer to have that life back but yeah. if you're choosing to look at the positives and look at you know the 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 things that you can do and try to not say i'm not going to succumb to it in that respect you know i'm going to try and and push myself to do what I'm capable of doing and what I want to do. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. So when I want to do something, I go, how can I do this? I don't go, oh, I wonder if I can do that. Yeah. And you know what? I only realized that a few weeks ago, probably. And that's only because of watching you on your, mm. your um, YouTube channel and then watching some other people. And I realized that not everybody does that yeah. because you only have your own experience, don't you? Of course. So I just don't, honestly, I don't think I can't do things, which yeah. sounds really mad. <laughs> I know I can't walk because yeah. I need to have my walker with me. Yeah. But that doesn't stop me getting from A to B and it doesn't stop me doing anything really. Um, so yeah, I just go, mm, that looks good. How can I do that? Yeah. And people look at me and go, but you're disabled. And I go, so yeah. I can just, you know, I didn't think I'd ever go abroad again. I thought I'd, I wouldn't be able to fly. Yeah. But you know what? Last year, I went to the Netherlands amazing. and I saw the tulips. Yeah. And I had some amazing floristry experiences. And now I've got my passport. Next place, I want to go to New York. Oh, brilliant. So I'm going to I'm going to plan some stuff like that because I've done yeah. it once. I also have two amazing friends who are lovely, husband and wife, and they happen to own a travel agency. <laughs> And I said to them, do you think not, we it's could not Nick do and Paul, holidays? It? It, yeah. <laughs> the Whiteheads. Yes. Whiteheads, it yes. is. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. That's it. So we both know yeah. them. I'll drop, a, I'll drop a link in the uh, description yes, to, uh, to Global Austin Travel. To their, to their brilliant business. Yeah. So when um, and I spoke to them and said, do you think we could organize accessible holidays? And they went, well, yes, of course we could. Um, exactly. So, yeah, so that's something yeah. I can, I'm, I'm going to do. And yeah. I, I want to go to New York. 
Amazing. I think that's a, a wonderful I idea. And it's, um, I've, I was, I've been lucky enough to, to go to New York a couple of times when I was a bit younger, perhaps not old enough to fully appreciate it, but yeah, a, yeah. a great city. And um, I think perhaps it is maybe worth um, just, just giving um, you know, Nick and Paula a good, a good, good other plug, because actually having someone that can take away some of that stress and yeah. accommodate the things that, that you need and, yeah. and, and have someone that if things do go wrong, you, you can call upon. Um, cause I know that even from uh, uh, everyday Joe blogs will have travel problems sometimes. And I know, um, from conversations I've had with Nick that they, um, they sort that out. So there is, there are ways in which, like you just said, how can I do that? Or who can help me do that? Yeah. Perhaps are things that are, um, that are really important to, to, to think of when we are trying to do more with our lives and not, you know. Yeah. If somebody wants to, that's the thing, isn't it? Somebody else might say, I'm not that fussed about travel, but I would like to swim. Yeah. Or, you know, I would like to take up a different sport. Look at yeah. all the guys in wheelchairs that go and do basketball. Yeah. Yeah. There's no reason why people can't do whatever they want to do. There should yeah. be a pressure to do something amazing. Yeah. You know, I'm just like some people climb a mountain. I yeah. can't even get my leg, you know, yeah. in my clothes in the morning yeah. trying to get your jeans on. That's your own mountain to climb, isn't it? I think That's when, it. each morning so just, just to get going. Think, oh. um, but the reality, if somebody said to me, Carol, do you want to go and climb a mic? I would have gone, hell yes, let's yeah. go and do it. Because the opportunity would be there yeah. and I'd have to and I'd have to think of that. But that isn't something I'd seek out, but, you know, something exciting like New York. I mean, I'm just thinking of all the accessories I'd need. <laughs> <My> headphones, <laughs> yeah. you know, for the sound. Yeah. But but it's still an experience, isn't it? You go, yeah. I've done it. I've done New York a few times. So yeah. It's kind of still doing the things that I enjoy. Yeah, that's so, it. And and maybe even identi or revisiting and identifying the things that that do make you happy, that do bring you joy, and then yeah. thinking backward steps. How do I then make make that happen? Um, because yeah, yeah. It's, it's not. Okay. Do you ever? Does your mindset ever switch where you think should I do that? In case if you think how can I do that? Do you ever think maybe that's not? Is that ever a thought that enters your mind and you think perhaps I need to be a bit more realistic or, you know, that's going to be too much? So or... far it hasn't. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> so far it hasn't. I mean, you know, COVID came and I had all these seeds and I knew I could sow them and get food and I knew people would want food. So I am a person that's always just gone, right, I can do this. And I think with MS, what I'm just doing is taking one step ahead of me yeah. so I can see the next thing I need to do. So I'll start that. Then I can see the next thing and the next thing. And that's what's happened with Love Carol. Yeah. I started off going, I'm just going to go online. Yeah. That's laptop life. I can do it wherever I am. It's not a big deal. What's that turned into? Yeah. An empire, it feels like. <laughs> and, and this yeah. is part of it now. But yeah. But yeah, that's what happens, isn't it? You start something and other things are drawn to you and you end up you know, having something that was amazing. And that's what happened with the social enterprise. Yeah. We've just taken a little bit of a, 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 um, a twisty turn in yeah, the road. Yeah, a bit of a pivot. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And that's because, you know, um, lockdown and COVID's over now. Yeah. And so we can look at something different. And I do have to think, um, I'm lucky that I have my friends and my MS team who are amazing. Yeah. They remind me that what I have actually is a progressive condition. Yeah. So maybe if I'm going to change and do something, maybe do something that's going to be compatible with a progressive condition. Yeah. Um, well, certainly something that whilst you feel able to do it now, why not do these things that you want to do? Because there may come a time when the choice isn't yours. And that's something that realistically have to be aware of. Yeah, just ignore that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good on you why not <laughs> yeah i'm just like you know i am i live in the now yeah. and i do the, the thing ahead of me what do i want to do i want to try a podcast let's get it on youtube who do i know my lovely friend liam <laughs> and yet yeah, and you're going to come and help me with that and that's yeah. amazing and that's as I'm i really help somebody else you're you're helping me take my first steps yeah so to have a mentor that you know follow follow behind you is amazing i'll just let you trip up all the way along <laughs> and i'll just come in smoothly well, i've already made a lot of the mistakes so i've, I've got them out of the way for you so hopefully it'll be That's a bit more it. smooth sailing and you know there'll be other people watch us and go wow because there's people out there with parkinson's and rheumatism and the thing about me now with love carol is that um i'm broadening out yeah for anybody with any kind of lifelong condition yeah. their family and um and their carers yeah 
Uh, and that's mainly because I can't say I'm a specialist on MS. I'm learning every day as I go. And but I have always worked in the area of equality and diversity yeah. and ethics. So that that wider space, I yeah. think, is where I can be going forward. And um, and yeah, and you and I can keep links on our website. Oh, definitely. And I'll definitely. share your stuff. And um, yeah. Like I said, I mean, many positives that can come out of, of negative situations. Our lives could have been and, and, and should have been very different, but they've, you know, our yeah. paths have crossed, and it's it's great that we've been able to form a, a, a great friendship and, and we're able to support each other because we've got very similar, very different projects and ideas that we want to, yeah. to want to do in different guises, different formats. But ultimately, we want the same thing, and that's to support people. Um, and that's yeah. where I think we, if we can support each other. And that that's a great way to help support other people. And like we said, it, we're kind of off opposite in one way. You're a you know you're a boy, I'm a girl. Yeah. Um. And yeah, you're younger than I am. So so there's those different sort of areas, yeah. aren't there? Yeah. You know, if I've got a, a a younger guy that comes to me, I can go. I know somebody fantastic can help you. Yeah. And pe we're in a space then where people get what they need and that's what that's, that's what the important thing is yeah that people get what they need in that moment yeah um because they just need some support don't they yeah, and definitely. yeah we can we can give some of that so definitely. yeah i love the idea of that um yeah so so when you um when you had that decision or that you had that moment and you made that decision that you right i'm gonna go online i'm gonna have a look and do this what how did you feel when you went online? What did you find? What was your experience in terms of your research and looking into things? What mm. what was that like? So, yeah, I mean, the the idea of it really came from um, a friend of mine who, uh, she's our accountant, Kay, and she said to me, you've just got so much that you could share and give. It, it just makes sense, and you yeah. were doing that before. So I was like, mm, okay. And um, the more we thought about it and spoke to a friend and they went, oh, yeah. And one of my friends went, you need to do it and you totally need to call it Love Carol. <laughs> yeah. Because for everything There's a story I, behind that, isn't there? That's yeah, right, said. yeah. Well, you know, even now people come to me and go, what about this and what about that? And what? how do I know if I'm disabled or how How do I get my, my grand out of wheelchair? You know, and so I'd text them or email them and I've always just ended it Love Carol. Yeah. Um, and I and I did that because prior to that, everything I'd ever, ever had was kind regards. Kind yeah. Of yeah. Or just or regards if you were, if right. you were annoyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I really didn't like it. <laughs> um, so so that was just like my new sort of sign off thing, and um, and I'd always done that with my friends anyway. So that's where that came from. But when I went to have a look, I couldn't find th – there's some great things, so I'll give a couple of plugs I can think of. Simply yeah. Emma. So she's a young woman. She's a wheelchair user, and she yeah. travels around. So Simply Emma is great. She's just been on top of the O2 arena. Oh, wow. So I go and have a look at her blog. She's fantastic. I'm not connected with her yet, but she was one I looked at. Yeah. There's another guy. I can't remember his name, but he was doing a blog on – disabled drivers right okay so ms and and driving and yeah. rights and all that a real type specific of sort of yeah. area so that I people struggle with a few niches like that but not anybody that's got a kind of wider remit yeah that wasn't one of the organizations right yeah so there's you know ms yeah. society parkinson's yeah. alzheimer's rheumatoid there's all of those are online but i couldn't find anything that that's what i was looking for yeah and so, i think that one of the things with that is because you've mentioned the ms society there and there are other organizations that yeah. that do offer that support and it's it's great and the work they do is incredible and it, we're very lucky to have some great organizations like that yeah. but what i think is refreshing and what people do like is to hear experiences and advice from people who are living with conditions or living with yeah. these restrictions or disabilities because you know the ms society is great um and i've got so much time for them and and um, they've, they've really helped me out um but sometimes if you have got a doctor who's perhaps giving a speech to the group on stage or you see posts online they can be really informative and and and, and great but the person who perhaps is writing them hasn't lived through what you've yeah. lived through and that's where i think mm. it's not one's better than the other it's just there's a place for both and i think people perhaps yeah. resonate more with with your personal experience and yeah. your manner um, as opposed to a doctor or a, a neurologist or whatever it might be. And I think maybe, maybe that's more so the appeal that people or the thing that people are looking for and the thing that you're looking for. Yeah, I think there's that personal touch, isn't there, yeah. with someone. So you feel like you're connecting with the person, which I think is important um, and I would have appreciated. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, my MS team are amazing. 
but they're busy and yeah. we have a short space of time with them, don't we? Yep. And you know what it's like. Can you remember the right question to ask? Uh, no. But the second I can the week before. The door, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. so yes, when you've got a cognitive deficit and you've got an hour to ask all your questions, you get in and go, oh, yeah. my God, I can't remember, I can't remember. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, so that's, you know, they're fantastic. Um, but we don't have access to them all the time. And again, they're not living with it either. Yeah. They're looking after lots of different people yeah. and they're doing a great job, but it's just not the same. Um, mm. So, yeah, I like to think that somebody can email us. Yeah. They can leave a comment. Um, we're hoping that the website is going to go live in a couple of weeks. Um, they'll have access to YouTube, comment, send something. You can email um, at admin at lovecarol.com. Um, and we will have a look at it and we will find the answer for you. And Amazing. and it's evidence-based. I can't get away from you know, <laughs> my legal career. <Yeah. laughs> Everything I'm going to do is evidence-based. So um, that's important to me. Um, and yeah, so we'll be you know helping people with some coaching if that's what they want. Yeah. Could, they can just ask a question. There'll be articles on there on the blog. So there's plenty of information for them just to look at. Um, and the socials and we're going to have two events a year as well which yeah. is going to be fantastic i'm really excited to to get involved with that yeah, as well that's and going to be great we'll both be able to share more about that as as we have more to share yeah but, um, we will yeah. and so people will be able to then come and connect with us and everybody else who's there in a bit more of a one-to-one -one thing if yeah. that's what they want to do and yeah you know and we'll get make together it fantastic yeah 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 because i think um having that face-to-face -face interaction is is really valuable um because one thing I was going to ask you, actually, or one thing I wanted to touch on, you, you mentioned there when you're going online and, and finding some support and now offering support. I do find that, um, or I certainly felt when I was first diagnosed, that you do feel lonely, isolated, cut off. Mm. You know, you're, you're figuring all this out and, and what's changed in your body and your mind yourself. And, and that can feel, you know, uh, really, yeah, really isolating, really lonely. But I think, you know, one thing I would say to people, if anyone is watching, perhaps whether newly diagnosed or, or not, yeah, one of the things to, to think is that, you know, one thing you should be aware of, anyone who's watching that that does feel that way, that there is a, a big community out there of people, um, disability advocates, people who have lived through experiences, people who are learning, and there's all that kind of information to share. There's communities out there and you're not by yourself because even if you feel like your family aren't interested or your work have been really unaccommodating and you just feel by yourself, we're all here, we all want to talk, um, we all want to support each other because we've all got each other's backs. Yeah. And I think sometimes as well, it's hard with your family because yeah. you don't necessarily want to show them that side of you, like we say. Yeah. We, a lot of masking. We, we I think, can see there? that they're already upset and yeah. struggling. Um, I know my brother and sister went away and did a lot of research online. Mm -hmm. And when I was diagnosed, he said to me, don't look online. It's yeah. too scary. Let us start you on some treatment and yeah. we'll look at that. So, But they did go because they wanted to know what they were dealing with. Yeah. And that must be scary. So mm -hmm. I would say if somebody's newly diagnosed, don't go online yeah. because there is so much out there. And at the beginning, you are not likely to have all of that yeah. or even anywhere near all of that. Yeah. And you may never, ever develop some of the symptoms that you're looking at. Yeah. And just remember that it might feel like this is your worst day, but yeah. I promise you there are lots of us who are living with some of the worst symptoms yeah. and there are tools that we can give you. There yeah. are coping strategies and mechanisms. There's support and reassurance out there. Yeah. Anybody can get either in touch with me or you, yeah. whoever they feel like they might be more comfortable with. Yeah. Um, you know, and yeah. It, and it goes can, back to your comment before, sorry to, to, to jump in, yeah. of how can I do this? So it's, yeah. it's right. I need to figure out what tools are available, what yeah. adjustments or modifications can I make that allow me to yeah. do the things that I want to do and, yeah. and not think, well, I can't, I can't do it now. It's, that's it. It's because, yeah. because that was my experience initially. I like when I first was diagnosed, I didn't know anybody else who had it. Um, I didn't, well, there was certainly no one near me that I could kind of touch base mm -hmm. with. And I, I went and, and met with my local, um, MS society who are lovely people and I've not seen them for a long time. It was, it all kind of went out the window when lockdown happened and, and yeah. I do need to get back in touch with everybody. But when I first walked into the room, I was running a bit late. I didn't know where everyone was. So it was a bit of a quick rush. And then suddenly I looked across the room and, I, and there they all were, but there's so many people that, that sort of, I didn't resonate with immediately. They were perhaps a bit older than me. And a lot of people had walkers and wheelchairs and sticks. And I was mm -hmm. just, I felt 
I felt like I'd been punched in the face. Um, and it was really, really daunting you think and overwhelming. You see your future in front yeah. of you, don't you? Yeah. So I was in James Cook for months yeah. on a ward there. And some of those people, I didn't understand at the time, but some of those people were really advanced MS and some of those people had motor neuron disease. Right. So they were two ladies were right at the end of their lives. Yeah. And because I was in there for months. Yeah. So, um, well, like I say, you know, ignorant bliss. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was, I was just unaware really. Mm. And so, um, but as I did start, went onto the rehabilitation ward, started to understand a little bit more, learning to walk again, yeah. doing all that sort of stuff. And, um, and then you start to realize actually how serious it is for some people. Yeah. But then you also start to realize that everybody's a bit slightly different. Yeah. Somebody's in a wheelchair and they've been in that wheelchair since maybe they were 12 years old. Yeah. And other people live all their life with MS and never yep. use a wheelchair and never have any problems walking. Yep. So that's the thing I want people to understand when if they're newly diagnosed or if they're having some neurological symptoms and yep. MS might be one of the things. Yeah. Because it's a few it is difficult things. to diagnose, isn't it? So people yeah. often spend a long time period thinking it could be, but don't know. Yeah, I think it took about eight months for me to get a diagnosis yep. because when when it all happened... What I actually had was meningitis. We didn't know that. Right. Oh, wow. So 999 ambulance to hospital, diagnosed straight away with meningitis. And that was because I had this undiagnosed MS and I'd picked up, um, norovirus was around at the time. Right. And I wasn't shaking it off. Yeah. And well, your immune system's been compromised. You don't yeah. know. In fact, your immune system's attacking itself. That's right. Making you vulnerable. Yeah. And, and I didn't and know I had this MS because it's late onset. Yeah. So that infection just ran right around my body, crossed the blood brain barrier, and I had meningitis. Wow. So I was straight in then, treated for meningitis. And um, and so that took some time to recover from. Then yeah. as I got a little bit stronger yeah. and they could do uh, MRIs and I had a lumbar puncture. Right. Um, and it was from there then that they yeah. said that it was um that it was MS. And and yeah, it takes a long time because your lumbar puncture alone takes about eight weeks to come back doesn't yeah. it the process of it i was, I was quite lucky i didn't actually end up having a lumbar puncture i know yeah. um it's it's not supposed to be a very pleasant experience but... well i tend to say i managed it so anyone can because i don't want to frighten anybody who's yeah. going to go and have it yeah yeah so some people go oh it's horrendous a lumbar puncture but i think it can depend on how you manage that as well yeah so for some places you say lie down for a long time so right. i had to lie down for straight flat after a while and that helps stop the headaches right some people say drink lots of water some people say drink coca-cola um i had two lumbar punctures because the first one didn't work very well Typical. so i had to go into <laughs> a theater and yeah. have a second one wow but you know they take six weeks each time so that lengthened the period of time for yeah. diagnosis and it's just what happens isn't it yeah so it is. you have to sort of that's the other thing i suppose i'd say to someone it's just like just relax yeah because we're really desperate for answers yeah but it's a process it is yeah it's a process of scans yeah. of waiting for nhs time frames blood tests and yeah blood yeah. tests and um as much as you know i was very grateful if i had understood better i might have been more frustrated yeah um, yes. which is why i say blissful ignorance yeah, <laughs> yeah. i was yeah. in a ward with lots of other people some of my friends were visiting, yeah. my family were coming and, you know, I had a very simplistic sort of understanding of what was going on. And given the time frame, that's why I say I'm quite thankful for that. Yeah. It might be different, mightn't it, if somebody's at home and wondering yeah. whether, the, you know, because some people work and they will continue to work beyond the diagnosis. Yeah. But there's, I say to people, you're in the worst time. The worst time is that is that little gap, isn't it? The yeah. grey area between you've got your symptoms, now somebody's recognised that, but you've not got your diagnosis yet. Yeah. That, to me, is the worst time. Yeah. Once Just you've got no your diagnosis... no man's land, sort of not knowing where yeah. you're going to go. Yeah. People were saying to me, oh, God, it must be horrendous. Actually, I was really pleased yeah. I had MS because now I can start to work out what I'm going to do. Well, what's the treatment? Am I going to drive? Am I going to go back to work? what's happening yeah. and yeah i'm on a drug trial and no i didn't go back to work and no i don't drive but at least i know yeah 
And that's better, I think, yeah. than not knowing. And that's, Definitely. that's the worst bit. Yeah. That it's not knowing. Well, I and often often say that to, to people that if someone messages me and say, I've just been diagnosed, I always say, I'm really sorry to hear of your diagnosis, but I'm, I'm really pleased that hopefully you've got some answers to questions you've had for a, for a long time. Because yeah. that is that, yeah, it's not the news you wanted, but you've got, you've got the like results. Phew, yeah. I wasn't going crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, that's it. I actually, yeah. I remember when the doctor told me, because I... Um, my my wife was on her way coming from work and I'd got there first. So uh, I suppose gratefully, uh, well, I'm grateful, I guess, to, to the neurologist at the time who he started to do a few more tests before he gave me the, the, the results because I think he just knew he wanted, I wouldn't want my wife there. Yeah. Um, so he was just sort of killing time doing a few bits. And then because of that, I thought, oh, well, he's doing this. So I've, well, maybe it's not, but I, I had already come to the conclusion from, from the symptoms I'd had and the reading that I'd done that, it was MS. So actually when he told me, I kind of smiled, I think, because it was like a, yeah, I'm right. Like, I'm yeah. not meant, I'm not going crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not losing my, say, it's, it? yeah. I'm not, I'm not going mad because of the crazy symptoms yeah, that I've been saying any, for this, any brain yeah. condition gives you. Yeah. Um, that's just the weirdest thing ever. Yeah. But for me, MS wasn't even there. So what yeah. happened was my friend was there with me and, um, uh, and he was going like, you know, he was quite a, Full on person, yeah. right? Okay, we need answers. <laughs> so they said, right, come down and we'll explain it to you. So we went down into this neurologist room and he was yeah. there with me and they put the, the brain scan up and I went, oh my God, look at all those pretty little lights. <laughs> and he looked at me and he went, I don't think that's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. And then they explained it to me and I was like, right. So those okay. are the lesions that you could see. Yeah, the, the white lesions that are all over yeah. my brain yeah. look like pretty Christmas lights. Yeah. If anyone's not seen, I was like, yeah. oh my God, how pretty is that? And then I look. Oh yeah, that's my brain. Yeah, those are lesions though. They're not can't. supposed to be there. <laughs> yeah. But don't yeah. worry, we're going to sort them out. I'm yeah. going great. Yeah. And then they go into this this kind of very gentle voice, don't yeah. they? Oh, it's very gentle. Yeah. I'm giving you some bad news, <laughs> and I'm just going right, okay. But yeah. yeah, that that point then it changed properly because meningitis was somebody so something you recover from. Yeah. Multiple sclerosis is disability for the rest of your life, isn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. And that was what other people could see. I yeah. realised uh, at the time I was just like, well, yeah. that's great. At least we know what yeah. it is Let's now. Let's get it shifted and crack on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because this neurologist said, don't worry, Carol, we're going to sort those lesions out, which for me meant we can heal them and they'll go. Yeah. What he means is we can reduce your yeah. inflammation yeah, Try I'm make pumping them you through. inactive lesions, but they're there. That's yeah. right. I'm pumping you full of steroids for a start. So you're climbing the walls and you yep. think you're crazy. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, <laughs> Got yeah. Got to start somewhere. Because that's the other thing, isn't it? Yeah. Is that people go, but there's treatment. And then you go, mm. yeah. Okay, uh, let's have a look at not that. Not something that uh, there are a lot of people who, who, try to steer clear of your, your DMTs, they call them, don't you? The yeah. Disease modifying treatments. Yeah. Uh, people. Some well, some people decide to take that that uh, route of perhaps something a bit more, I guess you would say, holistic or yeah. you know more dietary kind of things, and um, they're, they're not for everybody. Um, but the, you know, and there's so many, which is wonderful because it wasn't yeah. that long ago there weren't any, um, and we've even got some now for progressive MS, which is great yeah. news. Mm. Um, but yeah, how how daunting it is, and and suddenly you think, well, I've got to take all these things now, and what's you know? Yeah, I think for me, I mean, I respect anybody's anybody's decision for their treatment is yep. the right thing for them but what i try to help people understand is that your dmts okay they're full on and they're strong and there's no getting away from that but that's because they're doing quite a serious job in your body mm -hmm. so people start to take them and go oh, i don't like that i don't like the way yeah. it make me feel um, I can't, I can't inject myself or yeah. I feel funny when I've taken the tablet or I've got to go for an infusion, yeah. which that's what I have. Yeah. But what I say to people is, look, it's short term pain for long term gain yeah. because what that DMT is doing is slowing down yeah. the lesions coming on your brain. Yeah. Slamming it's, those brakes on. That's right. So, so if somebody decides not to have that, well, then that's their choice, but yeah. they're risking more lesions coming at whatever stage that is, yeah. and you don't know they're there until they arrive. Yeah. When I when I was diagnosed, it was a big hit, and so I was getting new lesions every month. Right. So 
it wasn't a choice really for me. And they give you a book. I don't know if you did the same thing to I you. I will have done, yeah, yeah. They gave us a book so and said to me, can I go home and <laughs> read that book and have a think about yeah. what you want to have? This one's been discontinued because you grow two heads. You're like, right, okay, we'll skip through that. That's <laughs> it's right. quite overwhelming. And there was it? these ones at the other end. And so they go, they go mildly effective, moderately effective, don't yeah. they? And then there was these other ones at the other end and they had a big cross through them. And I was yeah. just like, oh, why has that got a big cross? So um, it gets explained to you very gently. Oh, well, yeah. you see how it works. Yeah. <laughs> we give you these lower drugs. And we see if they help. And then if they don't, then we take you up and up and up. Yeah. And again, my logical brain is going, mm. and how long does are you on those to try them? Well, they don't work very quickly, so it could be two years. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm on that one for two years. And the way we know it doesn't work is if I've got new lesions. Yeah. And each lesion means disability. Yeah, more symptoms, more progression. Yeah. So then that doesn't work. So we have another one for two years, another one for two years. So by the time I go up to the highly effective ones, yeah. I could be 70 and in a wheelchair and completely a different person. Yeah. And they go, oh, well, let's not look at it like that. So, yeah. So I, um, I asked, did a nice little, um, I'm trying to think of the word. We talked about this morning a business plan. Yep. We I did a business plan that said if I live in a home and I don't have these things, this is what I might cost the NHS. But um if I have a better drug that is highly effective, mm -hmm. then it'll stop the lesions and I will continue to contribute to my community and society. And never um, never thought of it that way, but that's what yeah. I did. That's what my job would have been before. Yeah. If I wanted to have something in policing, if I wanted to do something, right. yeah, then what you did was you put a business case together. Yeah. And you costings. Got, and absolutely. Costings and um, forecasts, which is what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a look and do that. So that's what I was doing. So I just applied my old job to my new first principle <laughs> thinking. <laughs> you look at your new challenge yeah. and you just break it right down to the basics. That's it. And and for the NHS, sadly, that comes down to money because they're funded. Yeah, of course, yeah. And it's not a criticism of anybody. It's just the way the process works. Yeah. So I was able to show them. And this is why I want to help people because someone else may not have been able to do that. Yeah. And and if you don't know sort of th th that much detail or, or, or think of it perhaps in that way, then you are likely just to perhaps go down that route. I mean, I, yeah. I started my first DMT was Tech for Dera. Um, I'd have that morning and night. Um used to i had a, an ice pack in the fridge that i'd keep my face cool get flushed and and, and um it made, me, it made me feel quite funny but my next scan there was more lesions there was more activity um and then they put me onto cladribin um which is like the i think it was originally it's like a chemotherapy tablet that was originally used to treat stickle cell leukemia i think oh, okay. um and that was one that i i mean you, you, it was very much like you almost had to wear a hazmat suit to take it yeah. but you took the pills for a week then you didn't have any for a bit and then you took them again then nothing for a year and i'm still within that time period of treatment even though i haven't actually had to take anything physically for a couple, couple of years now mm -hmm. um but you know with the last couple of scans i've had since then there's there's been no no progression which um you know no activity which is which is great to hear great news um but yeah had i maybe started on that perhaps things would be a bit different so it, it, it is it is worth understanding your options understanding yeah what you know what is available and how it how it works and not be deterred by any potential side effects that are listed and thrown at you yeah because we've all got to start somewhere haven't yeah. we and the nhs have got a, a whole load of people who are all starting in various ways yeah they need some kind of process to put people through so i understand why they do it the way they mm -hmm. do it um but but i'm on a drug trial now so um Fortunately, they were able to start the drug trial at James Cook. So there's me and a few other people, Brilliant. and it's called Ocrevus, and it's a chemo. Yes. Yep. So, um, so it's an infusion. So yep. I go twice a year, the end of January and the end of July, Amazing. and I have a chemo treatment. And it's it's um it's a a, a bit rough around that time. I'll be honest. I can imagine. Yeah. Yes. Um. But you know. Um, yeah, my, my I've lesions. heard really really good things about Ocrevus. There's someone yeah. another couple of people mentioned it to me recently that, um, you know post they've, they've had some really good successes and, and yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know 
we um we the people on the drug trial don't know each other specifically right. so we you can't sort of you know yeah. um discuss your symptoms and things yeah. like that but um uh, but yeah, you know, certainly online people are saying good things. Yeah. Um, it takes a bit of getting used to for some people. I can imagine yeah. some people have a you know fairly um, easy ride with it, I should say. Yeah. Um, I think because I was so so weak and my immune system was absolutely rife. Um, mine was a, a trickier yeah. go. Um, and it's taken about eighteen months for it to settle down for me. Yeah. Um, you know, for me to be able to sort of manage it because it makes my yeah. face all sorts of little bits of things going on but nothing that wasn't managed right there in that moment with them and they monitor you really well yeah um and so yeah you go into neurosciences at james cook to have it so i am incredibly grateful i practice gratitude all the time i feel like i walk around going <laughs> um but yeah very grateful because i didn't contract it till i was later in my life um and so yeah i've had a, an amazing life and a great career and i've driven all over and i've seen fantastic places so very grateful for that these young people that get it very grateful for where i live i've lived in some very different places to this for my <laughs> career around the country um but yeah um in the beautiful northeast a lovely rural area in a nice village and so yeah if you're going to be stuck anywhere <laughs> i'm very grateful for that yeah. so there's a for me, there's a lot to be grateful for, but it's taken some time to get to that stage. And again, some reassurance for other people. Yeah. I couldn't have understood that at the time when I was initially diagnosed, but I promise you that you'll get beyond that. You'll get on your treatment and things will improve and you'll look back and go, wow, look how far I've come because <laughs> that's what we're doing now, isn't it? Yeah, and it's not absolutely. about being clever or smug. It's about reassuring people that are going through something that unless you've done it it's a really hard thing to explain yeah. isn't it no i think that's 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 really great advice and and it's um like i said going through experiences like that and what we touched on earlier was that um you know everyone's experiences are different different symptoms um you know different responses to um to the ms so actually you know the drugs and things like that everyone's going to be a bit different so you know do a bit of research speak to your ms team yeah. and ask those questions and, and make sure you understand because yeah. actually it might be worth pushing towards do the research else. in the information that they give you yeah yeah so they'll give you information and you should be able to make your decisions from there rather yeah. than going all round all over yeah because that's it's paralyzing for some people they yeah. just the, the grief kicks in and you know you have got some decisions to make absolutely but they'll they'll help you and yeah. if anybody's not sure just get in touch and we can yeah. have a look absolutely and, and we'll do some evidence-based research and absolutely. help you with that i love that i love that um one thing i want to ask as well just before we before we wrap up it's um the one thing i like to to have a guest um leave our audience with is you already mentioned obviously uh newly diagnosed try not to you know delve too much into every different you know youtube uh, well, obviously watch youtube keep watching the youtube uh, but yeah don't necessarily go um reading everything that on the internet that you can find but what other piece of advice perhaps from from the experience that you've lived through so far what what's that i need to <laughs> condense this question carol um, what one piece of advice um would you would you give to someone who's newly diagnosed based on your experience so we've already said don't go looking at symptoms and things like that because that's crazy. There are some great positive um, videos on YouTube, aren't there? Yours yep. is one of them. Thank you. Um, and and there are others, which is fantastic. Yep. Other people some living with Some amazing creators. Yep. And uh, yeah, there are great things there. There are also some great things like, you know, Stephen Bartlett and yep. Seth Rogen and yep. um, yeah, Chris Williamson. Yep. Um, Andrew Huberman, who's a yep. neuroscientist. Oh, who, who, you've put me on to Andrew Huberman. I've been, I, well, I listen to him when I'm lifting off to sleep now. It's fantastic. Oh my God. Yep. I love Andrew yep. Huberman. Because he's a neuro based biologist or a he's biologist. He's a neuroscientist yes. and a neuro ophthalmologist. Right. And that's really important. Well, yep. for me, it is because I have eye conditions through it. So there's really good stuff out there yep. to read and and watch and yeah. i've learned a lot about our brain which has helped mm. me but also i would say you know if you feel yourself getting low take a deep breath lift your head up yep. because i promise you there is really good life yep. living with ms yeah yeah i am happy it's been a bumpy road to get here i'm three years on but i have a great life i'm ceo of my own social enterprise 
right? I have a beautiful home in a lovely area. I have great friends. I have amazing family. And you just learn to do it in a bit of a different way. Yeah. But you do it. How can I do this? How is what can you said. I do this? Yeah. And ask yourself, what do you want out of it? Not what can I do? Don't limit yourself to what somebody else tells you. Yeah. You know, go and have a look online at first principles thinking. Okay. It's amazing. Yeah. And um, Elon Musk gets credited with it, but for his rocket, but <laughs> um, it was, um, I can just think of his name at the moment. That's a symptom of MS. Yeah. <laughs> it's gone round. Aristotle. Yes. Aristotle is yeah. the person that devised first principle thinking, right. which is basically don't start with what you think you know. Right. Yeah. Don't start with something. Okay. So like, for instance, this is how Elon did it. He wants to take a rocket to space. Who's done that? NASA. Anybody else would look at NASA and go, they've done that amount. Start there and build up. Yeah. NASA. Say, for instance, spent £600 million on a rocket. Yep. Yeah. Someone else would go, well, they've got us that far. Yep. It's going to cost £600 million. And then on top of that, yeah. first principles thinking, no. Forget what NASA have done. Start from the ground up. Right. How much does it cost for this? How much does it cost for a battery? How much steel do we need? How can we do that? Yeah. Elon Musk built the rocket for less than a third of the price wow. <laughs> because he went back to first principle thinking yeah. and what we do in society is people go oh well let's not reinvent the wheel yeah <laughs> so they start where somebody else has left off yeah but that person might have started their journey of building that up 30 years ago yeah and we've got better technology and we've got better everything so yeah. honestly first principle thinking do not worry about things that are not ahead of you yet yeah Okay, I like yeah. that. Deep breath, head up, think, right, I'm going to manage this. How am I going to manage this? What are we going to do here? And trust the medical professionals, trust other people who are a bit ahead of you like I'm doing with you. Yeah. No pressure at all, Liam. <laughs> and um, and just know there's other people out there. There's yeah. You can have a really, really good life with MS. Um, it just takes a little bit of creativity, especially in the in the beginning. Yeah. That, that's what I would say to someone. Fantastic. Obviously, you said there about not going on online, but I think one of the points to draw out of what you've just said there is yeah. to be aware that there's lots of different stuff and to it's be be selective, be careful about what you if focus your time on. If somebody wants to go online, go and have a look on YouTube, yeah. okay, and have a look for these great people. Look for Dr. Andrew Huberman, yeah. because once you get him, yeah. it will suggest others to you. Yeah who are also very good. You might find a guest that's been on that you want to then follow them. Exactly. And, yeah. There's another lady um, and she's called, is it Sarah or Tara? She's also a neuro uh, scientist and a neuropsychologist. She's fantastic. I've just been listening to her as well. So, so there's good positive stuff out there that's yeah. going to help you see that actually we know more. So I can I just say this one thing. You can say as much as you like. <laughs> this one word changed all of our lives and it's neuroplasticity right so up to 10 years ago um everybody scientists we all thought that the brain that you were born with and grew up with was your brain you can learn certain new things but that was your brain 10 years ago they realized that neurons can't they don't regrow so if that's a nerve and it breaks yep. that same nerve can't regrow but we can grow a new one at the side of it okay neuroplasticity how do you oh, do it right. by knowing what you want to do and by completely repeating the same thing repeat repeat yep. repeat a new one grows that is neuroplasticity that. that is a game changer and we've only known it for 10 yep. years so that's the biggest thing so if you put into new into youtube neuroplasticity right. you'll get loads of great speakers yeah and i would say that is where you want to spend your time yeah because it's all positive and it gives you hope can, and yeah and yeah. confidence you yeah. can go back to your neurologist go and tell me about neuroplasticity <laughs> <laughs> but it just gives you a little bit of power back doesn't it yeah. and that's what we need sometimes yeah just get ourselves in a little bit more of a bar balanced way ready before for when we go and yeah. um, and have our conversation. So yeah, definitely. I just wanted to get that one word. Oh no, I'm really glad you did because I will definitely be doing that um, this evening. I will be uh, putting that into YouTube. Uh, what I will do as well is um, some of the um, channels, creators, websites that we have mentioned throughout the episode, I will leave below in the um, description. Um, so do check those out. Carol, I want to thank you for letting me uh, come and thank check you. out the studio and I'm very much looking forward to um, the future of Love Carol. Again, we'll leave um, links and things in the description, but thanks Thanks for having us and yeah 
Thank you for visiting. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you.